G'day, and welcome back to Pillars of Ranternity. So we've gained the trust of the knights, and so now it's time to actually get uh, the Crucible Knights. Uh, now it's in time, but now it's time for us to actually try and finish off this plot. The key thing I'm missing is how to actually get into the uh, group that's going to be chatting with the Duke. And I'm quite puzzled by this. Um, I had assumed we would talk to the Night Commander. Tell us about them. What do the dozens have against you? No, that's fine. Yeah, so they're definitely a faction. So I guess, uh, let's just see what we've got. We'll go back to the Hermit of Hadrid House. Ah, okay, fair enough. I assume, yeah. Right, that's kind of annoying. You assume that it would be the group that you're actively talking to that would get you in, but that's fine. Whatever. We're so close. We should be able to actually finally get in and finish off this act this episode. And this is well beyond any uh, where I got in my previous playthrough. I mean, the entire expansion was stuff I'd never seen before, but also, like, I'd done the starts of a bunch of these quests before, but I'd never finished off this act. So, really looking forward to seeing that. Seeing where the main campaign goes. Although I will head back to the White Marches. There's no chance that I'm going to get this finished in time for uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 to be out. So, that's not ideal, but whatever. Okay, so yep, we'll just head down here. been interested in trying to play more games in Swedish to improve my Swedish, but unfortunately uh, it's really not popular to translate games into Swedish, because it seems that most Swedish players want to uh, want to play games in English. The translations, I believe, have historically been pretty bad. Alright, now let's go talk to Lady Web. If I'm going to do this to for you, you need to tell us everything about tales. I told you everything you need to know. But not everything. It's only right that you know everything. When I was younger, before Dunreed Row, I had many suitors. These were fine-looking <laughs> men of good stock. But I could see their thoughts, and they were unimpressive. Boys' thoughts. I toyed with their affections. I resented all of them. And then I met a man whose uh -huh. mind was a mystery to me. But he understood me. He knew me at a glance. Told me things I didn't know about myself. He was neither handsome nor charming. But he was all I ever wanted. And, of course, you're talking about Tails. We Tales. made a game of my gift. He would ask me about people, and I would tell him what they were thinking. Sometimes the information was very sensitive. And then one day he asked me if I trusted him. I said I did. <coughs> Next I knew I was donning a silver mask and swearing oaths to Woodica. Using my gift for the leaden key still felt like a game to me, so I did it. I did it because it pleased him. But it didn't last. I don't like living in the dark. It's a powerless, hopeless feeling. Every day I did things without knowing their purpose. Every day I loved a man without knowing his thoughts of me. I sensed that there were things he wanted to tell me. I sensed that he knew everything the Leaden Key was created to hide. But Theos was unyielding. One day I disappeared without a word. He would kill me for it, and I knew that. It's their rule. 
I just wanted to see him plunge the knife, because then I would know. But the day never came. He has left me to wonder. Interesting. I have devoted my years to learning everything I could about him, in hopes I would find some clue as to who he really was and why he felt he had to keep his secrets locked away. I have precious little to show for it. Just an old woman nagged by old thoughts. Interesting. And that is truly everything I can tell you about Theos. I hope you will accept this embarrassing story as a show of my good faith. Yeah, that's a pretty good story. All right, I want to discuss the animancy hearings at the palace. What of them? The Knights of the Crucible have accepted me into the oh. delegation. Avar Wolfgren looks to the Crucible Knights as a voice of reason and order. Speaking from their section should lend you credibility with him. You need waste no more time here. Get to the palace. Make your case to the Duke. With him on our side, hmm. all of Deerwood can be mobilized against the Leaden Key, and Theos can be rooted out. I don't think it'll be that easy. I only wish I could be there to see it. There is a very old bottle of a very good brandy that I have been saving for a special day. If you hurry back oh, afterward... Shit. There may be a little left for you. She'll totally be dead Nothing. when we go back. You're going to do very well in there. Okay. Let's find out how badly this will go wrong. As soon as someone tells me I'm going to do well in something, I know things will go badly. We've done basically all the things. But yeah, there's no way this goes right. Oh, neat. We've got our tax collection. Nice. Ah, so this is us having to pay money to the to the crown. Oh well. I guess that's allowed. Okay, back to the palace. Out of curiosity, how am, how close am I to the next level? Ages? Ah, oh, not too bad, but uh, yep, very close, good. Ages? Eh, and pretty close. So, uh, yeah, no, different classes do not have different XP tables, that's good. That's always super confusing, and I don't like it. It's a feature I really disliked in 2nd edition D&D. &D. Um... Different glasses have having different XP tables makes it hard to keep track of things, not anything else. It's kind of annoying that the party doesn't just have a single level. That would make things so much simpler, but the they basically want to disincentivize you from using a variety of characters slightly, which honestly, again, just seems a bit short sighted. Uh, if I were setting up a system like this, I would basically, yeah, just give the party a level. Um, I need to go to the palace and not to keep my bad. But in general, I prefer that because if I'm going to play a, a... In general, I play games once, right? It's really rare that I play a game multiple times. And in a big hundred hour long RPG... The chances of me replaying it just to find out more about a character I didn't spend much time with goes way down. I mean, seriously, that's a ridiculous amount of time. Let's just double check. I am, yeah, go to the Ducal Palace, good. And so, yeah, it's just, it ain't gonna happen. So, ideally, I want to be able to cycle characters in and out of my party, get to know them, and then drop them as I, like, finish quests or just if there's another character that I haven't really gotten to know that fulfills the same role if you're gonna limit the number of people which I mean I think is very valuable in a game like this can't imagine literally having a dozen people in my party oh go to the upper floor reserved on the balcony hmm. okay very nice and into the final thing 
Oh, right, and it's got <laughs> enough room to kind of put everyone here, but not the fox. The fox sits outside. The room below is animated amidst a heated debate. All the representative groups are easily discerned in the crowd. Crucible knights, stiff in their noisy armor, sit in one section. In another are well-dressed members of House Dominal, casual, watching with a predator's interest. Elsewhere are the ramshackle dozens, who have made no special effort to dress up for their liege lord. Interspersed are animances in their academic robes, with expressions either sour or concerned. Well, answer me this, Master Barash. If you animancers represent our best hope to cure the legacy, what progress can you demonstrate? Ramir de Barask is originally from Palmyra. Mm -hmm. He's one of the finest minds in animancy to come out of the Valian Republics. He left for Defiance Bay five years ago because he believed this was the true heart of animancy research. Interesting. As I've said, it isn't about progress, it's about <laughs> potential. <laughs> so in other words, we've gotten nowhere. But we totally could get there. My house would agree, Your Grace. We see great potential in its future. And I suppose your blazing profits during the legacy don't have nothing to do with that, do they, Dominel? You can't have it both ways no more! Animancy goes, or this country goes! So you admit, Master Barask, that Animancy is no closer to stopping the legacy than it ever was. No, we've had many promising experiments. Cadman Azo has shown... Cadman Azo murdered a child for a complete failure. We should be hanging him right now for what he done. The dozens won't stand for it. The, the experiment failed, yes, but his work... His work was sabotaged. Uh, our new delegate from the Knights of the Crucible. What makes you say sabotage? All at once, the attendees turn their faces towards you, a mismatch of judgment and incredulity. Only the Duke, a wild-looking man with a scraggly beard, seems unfazed by your interruption. I met a false patient in Brackenbury Sanitarium who tampered with Azo's machinery. The fuck's that even matter? These are people who would toy with the lives of our children! Indeed. Even assuming there was sabotage, is this Animancer Azo not still accountable here? There are those who know... It's interesting to have the exact same thing using the same reputation. Those who know me around here know me to be fair in judgment, Cademan Azo should be held innocent. Horseshit. These animancers can't be trusted. Look at what happened in Heritage Hill. Our supposed protectors from Crucible Keep can't even clean up the messes animancy leaves. Your Grace, we'd have a much easier time of it if our knights weren't so occupied trying to keep their organization from igniting a revolution on our very doorstep. Heritage Hill is blood on your hands, Justicia. You turn a blind eye and look what happens. Hmm. Let's go with I've been to Heritage Hill since the quarantine, so the knights were unable to control the damage. It wasn't animacy, but an ancient machine that caused it. You have some strange taste in travels, friend. The height of your tails expands with every breath. My word is my oath. I challenge anyone here to find someone who knows different. I had heard whispers of a new delegate set to attend today's hearing. I admit that your candor was mentioned more than once. I do. I love that my reputation and decisions in terms of how I've just approached conversations and problems are being used here. Tell us what you saw in Heritage Hill. Tear now nath uh, uh, Tear now nath houses an Angwithan machine that holds dominion over the flow of souls. It was this machine that made the district undead. Even if it is as you say, we have testimony that a group of animancers had been spending time there. Surely their tinkering had something to do with this. Hmm. So. They followed ambition blindly, taking few precautions, allowing personal feelings to get in the way of solving the problem. Or, I have reason to believe there are others at the tower who may have done this. See, this seems like getting animacy done. Or, let's go with, I have reason to believe there are others at the tower who may have done animacy this. Animacy has many enemies. You need only look around this room to see it. You're just... you're missing the point! Everywhere there's animators, <laughs> there's disaster! We all know what Widewind's legacy's really about. And it ain't about some sparkling saint from Creed Ceres who's mad because he took a stroll down the wrong bridge! Ha! <laughs> wrong bridge indeed! It's about a bunch of so-called intellectuals fucking with the natural order while the rest of us gotta suffer for it! Is it, though? 
Should we not take the time to reach a clear conclusion? I mean, what proof do we have? My son and daughter are buried beneath the floor of my house. We don't own no land, so that's where we lay them. My son. My wife let him slip when she was bathing him. Got water in his lungs he couldn't cough up. My daughter? We put her to bed one night, and the next morning she wasn't breathing. This hollowborn thing. Why why do any of those things have to do with animancy? Still let these charlatans play God. There's your proof, you damn copper fucker. Enough. None Eric. of these. Lady Dominel makes a point. If it's animancy, then why do the other states that permit the practice not suffer the same fate? Who among us can say he truly understands why the legacy has taken hold here? I can. The crowd begins to mutter, the sound taking a doubtful character. Right idea, Watcher, taking this hearing by the curly ones, don't waste your chance. Wyden's legacy is the creation of the leaden key. Cadman Azor's downfall was their work, as was the Tower and Heritage Hill. They want you to do this. They want Animancy to fall. The Dalmar ring expands into a din of skepticism that fills the hall. I've seen them in the ruins of Air Glanfath, operating machines that disrupt and redirect the flow of souls, near towns like Gilded Vale and Deerford, where the legacy is universal. As a watcher, I have heard their dead confess their plot. They are stealing the souls of the unborn. Beasts. Another lunatic at the hearing. Did you remember to lock your sanitarium before you left, Master Varask? You shamed your order by dismissing the truth before hearing it. I did expect better from a knight of the crucible. Is what I'm gonna go with, I think. You must know, friend, that the leaden key is a mantle for small time ruffians and children at play. I'm not saying you're a liar. Not yet. But you'd better start making sense of all this. Help us believe you. Let's see. So um, we can go with, okay, what's more likely? The gods are destroying Deerford for science practice in many parts of the world, or a group of people hate animancy and want it suppressed. Leaden Key is very real. There are, they are foreigners from Adir and Red Keras who hate Deerwood and want to see us suffer. Let's say her lord is cuckolded by his wife. If he tells her to stop, she'll only want her lover more. But he spreads a rumor that her lover has just visited a brothel and acquired a pox on his loins. Then she'll end it on her own, or we all want the same thing here. We work together. Let's just go back on our reputation. It's, if you know anything about me, you know this. I've been called many things, but never a liar. An honest witness is the best piece of evidence you have in this matter. The only piece of evidence. The only piece of evidence that doesn't send your kind to the gallows, you mean? You've made an unexpected case, friend. I'll say that much. It seems we have a new possibility to consider, at the very least. How was it you came to learn all this? Well, that's the crucible were instrumental in, my, in aiding my investigation. I see. I am impressed the knight seized such an unlikely opportunity to find an end to all of this. But these hearings are about more than Widewind's legacy, even though that is our most pressing concern. Let's say for the moment that I were to take you at your word that our friends in Brackenberry Sanitarium and their peers Bear no responsibility for this curse upon my country. I'm curious. What would you do if you were in my position? I'm going to go with... Uh, animancy should be studied in Deerwood. <laughs> if you don't, someone else... <laughs> ah. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Um, let's... Anim animancy should be studied in Deerwood. If you don't, someone else will, and they will wield great power over you. Her face steel, Pelagina looks away and subtly nods in approval. Alas shakes his head. Animats has served their own ambitions and their own purses. Giving them this power is like setting a child loose in an armory. Very well. That is all I wish to hear. Not just from you, but from everyone. Many days we've been at this. It is time we put it to rest. I want to thank the delegations for helping me collect my thoughts. And our new delegate who has warned us of a new possibility that must be looked into. The time has come to choose a direction for the Deerwood. I am ready to make my pronouncement. I just noticed something, right? So he is, his sprite is seated on the furniture, but I think what they've done is they've placed an invisible actor here, and then he's technically part of the background. 
Okay, let's see the pronouncement. Ramir de Barash, representing the interests of Anamancers in Deerwood. Step forward. Your Grace. Hmm, the doors have just opened. This strikes me as bad sign. It occurs to me now that my concerns about Anamancy may not outweigh its value. Yeah, figured this is how it would work. So Forgive now. Forgive me, Your Grace. We will accept no judgment but our own. What's he doing? Uh, no! Avenge the doom! No, no, wait! Yeah, and he does. Stop this! At once! And yep, I figured something would go wrong. And that would have happened regardless. Although it's kind of annoying that we literally get no opportunity to do I've anything. Given you every chance to end this pursuit. Shall I end it for you? Another time. I am already late. And then we just fall over? The words shall I end it for you ring in your ears. You find yourself gasping for breath, struggling to keep your own balance. You drop to a knee and watch as Teos hurries out of the building. The world dims around you. The screams and clashing of weapons fade to silence. All that remains are the words. Shall I end it for you? Theos stands at a pulpit high above an assembly of robed onlookers, you among them clustered around a wide circular pit carved of stone. He addresses a woman bound backward over a large iron wheel overlooking the great stone moor. Many of the woman's fingers and toes are severed. The bottoms of her feet are charred black. The skin on one side of her face looks like melted candle wax, black and red and seeping, and the angle of her back suggests a spine in ruins. Yet for all that, her expression betray betrays little of her anguish. I am already at peace, Grand Inquisitor. Are you... Her eyes are barely open, and her words come between strangled breaths. They are all steady, but they are steady and unbroken. So be it. If you desire no end, you shall have none. I find you guilty of heresy. May the eternal prison bar your soul from passage, for it is beyond redemption. He nods to a hooded attendant, who be begins to untie her from the wheel. Dominion of the Sleepers? You open your eyes to the beamed ceiling of the Duke's grand entry hall. The clangs of metal striking metal waft in from outside the, uh, outside, alongside the cries of the injured as you stagger to your feet. Theos is gone. Durance taps you at the end of his staff. Get up already! He shakes his head. I don't see how you plan to survive your trial, Watcher, if the very sight of your enemy makes you faint like a priest in a whorehouse. Let's be out of this place before something else goes wrong. Off to one side, you can hear the clinking rustle of chainmail, and you look over to see a wounded guard slumped against the wall. He's trying to say something, seemingly directed at you, but at first it's too faint to hear. He gathers his breath and manages to rasp out a few words. Lady Webb, she's the only... she must be told. She'll know what to do. Please, find her. Tell her everything. The guard passes out and slides to the floor, still. Yeah, okay, so now that's pretty straightforward. Don't go out there, there's riding in the streets. Okay, now we get to fight through the streets. Hooray! And as I said, I'm betting that she's going to be dead. Okay. Stand down, we don't want to fight you. And so both sides are going to just sit there. Right, got it. Well, we just run through then. Can't get there. It seems to me like this is going to be like one time version of this area. I would attack them, but that seems silly. Mostly feels like they're there for flavor. Oh look, Anamancer's boots. Interesting. Is there anything I can do there? Nope. 
and burnt the sanitarium. So basically, like, getting ready for this was completely freaking pointless. Alright, getting ready for that trial was pointless because Theos was always just going to pop in at the end and cement things inside a riot. He, he had a pretty straightforward plan. All we needed to do is, you know, stop it somehow. And yep, that's kind of what I figured would happen. So, of course, we're going to stop and loot the corpses. Did I or did I not say that we would have to deal with... Like, that there was no way she was going to survive. I'll just take that too. Why not? Quickly check the lower house for any survivors, even though logically we should be rushing for the roof. Especially since, honestly, the stuff we're collecting here is no pretty time. petty. As promised. But I want here. it. That'll do it. So, I will have it. Plus, you know, tiny amounts of XP for locking thing, unlocking things. Come on. Rush through. That's a fair amount of money on you, although that was copper, right? And then upstairs we go. Can't I can't help but expect that we will either see Teos here or something will have happened. But yeah. Interesting to like present the player with that choice, have things feed back, but ultimately lead them to the exact same kind of cutscene. I mean, what he said there literally made no sense. Oh look, there's a soul there for some reason. Like, we accept no judgement but our own, after a judgement that is positive to you gets provided. Silly. I take your things. I have a reputation for honesty. I should also have a reputation for theft, but you know, we avoid that I'll have somehow. This open in no time. As promised. I will take your sword. And I will loot from here as well. Oh look, Baratheon scripture, fine. Anything else? Nope. Alright, let's go chat. Lady Webb lies still in her bed, an ornate cushion propping her back upright. The blood pooled beneath the gash in her chest is tacky and nearly dry. A shattered glass rests on the floor beneath her dangling hand. You can feel the faint aura of her fading essence in your ken. Teos probably made her kill herself. You make contact with uh, and are immersed in a torrent of sensory input. When it comes, you find yourself in the same room, lying with, in bed with a glass of brandy in your hand. Through the walls and from the streets outside come the screams and shattering glass. Uh, and the cacophony of an angry mod mob. You take a sip and it warms your gullet. Across the room, the door opens up and behind a patient, steady push. Into the room walks Theos, the board, floorboards creaking beneath deliberate steps. You wait until the last of the brandies trickle down your throat before you speak. I was a fool to think I could tame these people. You came closer than most. A fine epitaph. No worse than any. You are concentrating, focusing with all your energy. It feels as though you are diving into a stone wall over and over, but it cracks suddenly, unexpectedly, allowing the vaguest wisp of a thought to leak through. What's in Twin Elms? Did you pull that from my thoughts? Honestly. I've had time to practice. He walks over to a small table and raises a half-empty brandy bottle to the eye level. He seems to approve of the selection and begins to reach for an empty glass. I was saving that for someone. Pity. Pity. You know this is how it has to be. He replaces the brandy bottle on the table. 
brandy bottle on the table. Jeez, I just can't read today. With care before approaching the bedside, he sits on the edge of the bed next to you. His words come freely, absent of all doubt. He draws a long curved knife from his belt, smeared with fresh blood. With his left hand, he gently pins your sternum as he raises the knife in the other, its point dangling above your heart. Prove it. Theos slips the knife between your ribs and pushes it through. Layers of tissue separate with brittle, papery stiffness, and blood wells up around the blade. A shatter of reflex causes you to drop your glass to the floor, and you hear it shatter. With the last of your strength, you take his knife hand in, in both of yours, a question radiating your mind. For an instant, to your great surprise, the pathway to his mind is left open for you, unguarded, and the answer comes simple, cataclysmic in its reordering of your thoughts. As Lady Webb, you feel as though you have an answer you've searched for your whole life, but in your own mind, her understanding lies just beyond your reach. You look at Theos as with the wide eyes of someone seeing for the first time, and draw your last breath as a black, velvety darkness descends over you. Smoke rises above the city walls in billowing plumes that blacken the sky in the storm. Behind the walls, the riots rage on. Known patrons of Anamancy are forced into hiding as looters ransack their estates and make off with their possessions. Anamancers are torn away from their families and dragged from their homes to be stoned to death in the streets. Word had spread immediately that Duke Avar had been assassinated and that an Anamancer was to blame. The city wasted little time in exacting revenge, and little effort into evaluating guilt. In the center of it all, Brackenberry Sanitarium burned. And down the lane, Hodred House, the last bastion of stability in the Deerwood, had fallen <coughs> silent. Now safely outside the city gate, your path points eastward to Twin Elms, where Theos is bound, for reasons that remain mysterious as the Leaden Key itself. And with that, we will leave it for this. And next time, I guess we head to Twin Elms. We start the next act. Until then, bye.